Beautiful people, how are you doing? I hope all is well. Continuing on with uh, with the 383 build, what I'm going to do now is marry the piston and the rods together. Um, they're held in place with some uh, what they call spiral locks. So we're gonna get these uh, paired together, get this thing assembled. Now, before we get started, it it, it it's very important that you uh, pay attention to the orientation of the dot on the piston and the large chamfer on the uh, rod. Now I have a little, little, a little uh, illustration here that I've laid out for myself just to keep myself uh, organized. Is I have an arrow showing which way I want the chamfer to go for cylinders one through one three five and seven and then the same thing on the uh, even side now the large chamfer needs to go against the crank the small chamfer corresponding to the other rod large chamfer goes against the crank pay attention to the dot on the piston that always goes forward so on the even side the dot will go forward but the large chamfer will be facing back towards the rear of the engine Remember, the large chamfer needs to go against the uh, go against the crank. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, beautiful people, got that uh, clip in, got that lock in, I'm sorry, let me say it correctly, got that lock in. So now what I'm going to do is lube up my pin, lube up this side of the uh, piston, slide the rod in, make sure the orientation is correct. You know, remember what I said about the dot and the chamfer. You wanna have those uh, orientated correctly because it is very important uh, how they are uh, set up on the uh, crank. Be generous with the lube. I'm using a Permatex Ultra Slick. Generous with the lube. And I'm going to lube up the uh, pan. Be sure you clean your, your uh, parts off thoroughly. I use some uh, carb cleaner to make sure that they're cleaned off. So get the pan lubed up. Slide it in. Slide it in.
have to face them forward. Large chamfer. Stretch the lock out a little bit and then uh, carefully work it into the groove. Use a very small screwdriver. Take your time. You don't want, you don't want to gall up your piston <coughs> so take your time and work it in I wouldn't suggest putting this in a vise or anything like that. You don't want to damage your piston. So just take your time. You, you can get it worked in. All right, got that in, got it assembled. Oh, uh, let me show you. So the, how the uh, locks go in into the piston. Like I said, there's a, uh, a channel right there where they fit in. The large chamfer, the dot. Make sure all that is orientated correctly. Uh, now see how to get them in. But I would guarantee there would be a bear to get out. So it's very important that you take your time and make sure you got everything organized and set up correctly. All right. Two down. Six to go. All right, beautiful people. We're down to our last one. Um, let me show you a close-up. See, down in that groove... That's where the uh, lock sits. And all you need is a small pocket screwdriver to work it into its place. Now, take your time. 
uh, so you don't put any uh, Mars on your on your piston. That would be a bad news. Very bad news. But I mean, just take your time, work you work it in. Uh, what I'm doing is kind of trying to thread it in there, so to speak. Then I can push it down with my finger for the most part, and then work it with the uh, pocket screwdriver. Get that in. Pay close attention to your, your valve reliefs. I did uh, make a mistake on one, and uh, I had to take the, the spiral lock out. So <coughs> just pay close attention to your valve reliefs, <coughs> the dot on the piston, and the large chamfer. All right. Next up is putting the uh, piston rings on. First, we got to... Uh, make sure the piston, the, the rings are gapped. Make sure the rings are gapped correctly uh, so that uh, we have a good uh, engine seal. What's going on, beautiful people? Today we're going to be uh, file fitting the uh, piston rings. Uh, got to uh, uh, gap them out to my uh, application uh, you see on this form here you got different applications uh high performance street strip street moderate turbo nitrous circle track drag race nitrous and blown applications uh i'm going for the top one i multiplied my bore by the uh 0 0.0045 for the uh top ring and the uh, second ring multiplied my board by 0 0.0055 came out with a top ring gap and gap of uh, 18 thousandths second ring 20 thousandths what you're going to need to to uh, file fit your rings first you're going to need a squaring tool a squaring tool to push it down to the cylinder to make sure it's even all the way around then also, you're going to need a file to knock off any burrs. Most importantly, you're going to need a uh, diamond cutter to file down the rings. Now, you want to take your time doing this because you can't put the metal back. You can always check it and refile, but once you've gone too far, you can't put it back. You have to get another ring set. I'm going to start with my second rings first, just to go ahead and get the feel of the uh, diamond cutter. And Also, you're going to need uh, feeler gauges as well. Just uh, checking to see where I'm starting at. This is a 4,000th uh, feeler gauge. Got a little ways to go. This is my second ring, and I need uh, a gap of uh, 20 thousandths. So, 16 thousandths to go. Mm -hmm. 